Hello, good people. Good morning. I like to do these videos in the morning, so it's morning for me. Um, another gray day here in this wonderland on, of Earth. Hey, just wanted to uh, <clears throat> talk about a line I love, and more importantly, an artist that I love and that maybe you haven't heard of before. If you haven't heard of this artist, I highly recommend you check them out. So I wanted to bring your attention to one of our southeastern Massachusetts local musicians who is no longer with us, uh, Michael Troy. And particularly, I am uh, focusing on his song, Dear Walter. It's uh, a fantastic song. And I actually find it's one of the songs uh, that pops into my head around the house more often, as often as any song that does kind of live inside my head, you know, uh, and appear from time to time as I'm doing things around the house or, you know, just, just living. It, there are lines from that song that come back into my memory, into my mind. So uh, I love this song, Dear Walter. It is off of Michael Troy's um, debut album, Whispers in the Wind, and you can pick that up uh, online, <clears throat> you know, stream it online, and probably purchase it somewhere, I'm not exactly sure, but definitely check it out and uh, look into this uh, local songwriter here from, originally from, from Fall River, Massachusetts, is one of the outstanding um artists that Fall River, Massachusetts has, you know, created or um, yielded, produced, produced is the word I'm looking for. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> Michael Troy is, um, for me, woven into my, mm, the beginnings of my musical uh interests or you know my guitar playing and songwriting interests for sure uh so um back in uh back in the late 90s i was hosting uh an open mic in warren rhode island and i was gathering performers and asking people to come and be the feature and it was in the, this old uh, antique store it was really cool atmosphere, really cool vibe, you know, um, quaint uh, kind of thing where people would come and play a couple songs, like like it's happening all over the place. But this was really nice. It was the first open mic I'd ever hosted, you know, in a series, and uh, I was really into it, and it was great. It was a great time. It was really fun, and uh, I absolutely loved it. And I was still just beginning to play guitar. Never mind, sing in public. Um, late 90s, so I had only been playing guitar for four, five, six, five, five years or something like that. Well, um, I called up Michael Troy, who already had been a, kind of a local hero to me because I had seen him perform various places over the years as a full-fledged performing songwriter. And I had met him a couple of times as well at other open mics. And yet he still remained for me like someone that was already doing it and, you know, really doing it well. And, um, you know, was way further along than I was. Um, but I knew that at that time I really wanted to continue to do what he was doing. Uh, and so, yeah, so I called up Michael Troy and I, I kind of didn't think I actually remember not thinking he had come but I was just like I'm gonna try because um why not and so I called him up and asked him if he'd come to the open mic sure enough he said yes he came to the open mic which blew my mind and of course the the whole evening and, and his performance was so awesome as well and he was such a warm person and such a good guitar player and more importantly, his songs were so darn good. Uh, that's what really stood out with Michael. Once he started playing the song, 
Like it was to be listened to. And every single song he wrote has a line or two that's so moving. Uh, yet, um, Dear Walter is, is one that really, really, really sticks with me, for sure. Um, there's a couple of lines that really stand out to me. One is one of the verses, and I mean, every each verse is, is so good. I could just tell you the whole song right here, but particularly... The verse that goes, um, uh, Me and Mare were Sunday riding, the old gray ford overheated. I went down in the highway hollow for water from a stream. And it brought me to my boyhood days, where sunrise eyes were warmly greeted. Life before coffee, growing up was just a dream. Ain't nothing ever turns out like it seems. And that verse, those lines right there, they come back to me often. I think um, one is the highway hollow. The who calls a highway, you know, gully, a uh, highway hollow. That's just good writing. You know, it's kind of old fashioned. And uh, but yet he made it really. I don't know, just makes it authentic and, and right. But it's great. It's such a moment of like, you can really see what he's doing. Uh, you know, the car overheated and I went down to get some water to put in the radiator. And I, had, I was transported to my boyhood days. I think we've all had those kind of experiences, right? Where you're just doing something and something triggers a memory or an experience of uh, your childhood that that's that's kind of nice you know and that kind of songwriting has such power I mean to just embody that experience to, to articulate that experience that I think we've all had and maybe continue to have regularly to, to literally bring that to life in the words and then also, just to capture the truth of that's that, you know, that that's what happens for us. Um, it's also got a little melancholy there at the end because, you know, ain't nothing ever turns out like it seems. It's a little melancholy there. The whole song is a little bit melancholy, but it's very beautiful. Uh, so that is a great piece of writing right there. The chorus comes back to me as well often. Uh, and, and when I say often, like almost annoyingly often. Uh, yeah, so, but the chorus, if I can get it right, of course, now that I promised I'm going to say it, it's going to be harder. But um, the chorus is, uh, oh yeah. Dreams are for children in a subtle kind of way. Growing up's just giving in to practicality. Growing old is when you realize that you've stopped asking why. When I don't know is easier than chasing butterflies. So good. That comes to me when I'm thinking practically. Maybe when I'm overthinking, you know, and trying to be real practical. Or, you know, you try to line up your trip to the store with the trip to the auto parts place and, and then to the to the friend's house and you try to be really practical about all your movements um, and almost overworking or yeah overworking life or something like that it comes to mind like man practicality is like uh, sometimes not as valuable as it seems because I'm not living in the moment but I love that growing up, just giving in to practicality. It's so that's a profound line. It hits me real hard. Uh, growing old is when you realize that you've stopped asking why. Yeah, I also think that um, the whole chorus there. I think it'd be called a chorus. It's probably a chorus. Yeah, it's um, it's kind of like a teaching or a lesson. Like don't let that happen. <laughs> You know, don't don't let that happen. Don't stop asking why. Go the non-practical route sometimes. You know, it's it's almost a teaching. 
there that Michael put out for us to heed or try to shape our life or reshape our life too. But I love, love, love those lines. I love the whole song. I mean, the first, the first verse is worth saying as well. It starts right away. It's like a letter. Dear Walter, the path is overgrowing. I want to open up my door and see my old friend walking in again. I'd like to drink a beer with you. Have a laugh, a tear or two. Blow the dust off old war stories. And the heroes will be us. And watch the setting sun turn into rust. That's some, that's some powerful back porch, front porch, back porch, rocking chair kind of music, which is probably my like North Star of what I try to do when I create music. It's either that back porch sitting there alone or with a couple of people uh, in a moment where there's not a lot of small talk and you're really feeling the moment, enjoying it. And, and that's where the music can hit and you can be real. You can sing something real, talk about real things. You know, it's like that by a campfire too. You know, I reference campfires in numerous songs that I've written. But like that moment, you know, you're hanging out there with a couple people. It's, I think what it is really for me is, is not a lot of small talk. I don't really like small talk very much. I mean, it's fine, but I, I like... You know, I quickly get through small talk to real talk. And uh, I think life's too short. Life's too short for small talk. Um, too much small talk. <laughs> so, but I think that's what really gets to me, that, that verse, you know, it's really settled and paints a nice picture. I think we can all relate. There's probably someone we want to hang on the porch with or watch the sun go down with. And maybe you can't. Um, because like Walter, he's not around anymore, or he was not going to be around anymore. And so that really uh, comes back to me a lot, those lines, that song. So I decided that I want to learn that song, and I was starting to look into it, which always excites me because I love to learn. I just love learning. I I just constantly love to learn things on the guitar, new songs, new styles, etc. And so I was like, I am, I am going to learn this song. And uh, so I listened to it, <clears throat> and I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn the chords. Let me figure out what chords these are. And that's how I, you know, typically approach it. Get the chords down, and then you can figure out the intricacies of the, of the playing. And that's where I had to stop for a moment because, like myself, Michael Troy is a fingerstyle guitar player. You can hear it. I think he always he also plays flat picking. Um, I'd have to listen a little further to see what he what he flat. I think Barb Tail Nag is flat flat picked. Another great song off of that album, Barb Tail Nag. Um, I think that's a flat pick song. Or Charlie Pikes is a, is also I think a flat pick song. But he plays a lot of fingerstyle. And um, when I went to actually kind of figure it out, I was, I was expecting to learn the chords and figure out the rhythm, and I had to stop because I recognized that Michael's thumb technique with his thumb pick is uh, going to be more of a challenge than I anticipated, which made me so happy for him because he really has in my ears, like a very unique style. He keeps that thumb going faster than it sounds in the recording to me. Like the thumb's actually part of the, uh, not the melody, but it keeps the tempo with the melody notes in a way. I, I can't even explain it because it's, I haven't, un I haven't um, dissected it entirely yet I just I had to stop for a minute so I could kind of figure it out and I'm at that point right now but I think the thumb moves a lot faster than I anticipated and I am not practiced at that so I'm really excited to train up my thumb on his particular song to 
to learn and catch up to what he's doing. So that's really exciting. And uh, I want it to be authentic, of course. I want it to be authentic to, authentic to him. Uh, you know, I could, I could find the chords and eventually I'll probably kind of make it my own-ish, but still paying homage to him, which is, I think, what I, what I do with other songs. Uh, but I need to be, for my own satisfaction, to be authentic to what he was putting down, which was very unique to me. And I'm psyched for him and I'm psyched to learn that as well. So, yes, so Michael Troy, he passed away, I believe, and maybe if someone happens to listen to this that knows, um, I believe he passed away in 2014. It might have been sooner. Um, I should have looked before I um, started talking about it, but uh, he's been gone some time now, and um, maybe someday I'll play Dear Walter. Uh, that would be great. There's, a, there's an annual fundraiser for uh, in Michael Troy's name every year that happens at the Narrows Center for the Arts in Fall River where people get up and play Michael Troy songs and uh, I should uh, I should check in on that to see if I could play Dear Walter although I think someone else has got to be already on top of that because it's it's so good um, and there's a lot of people around here that love love loved Michael Troy um, yeah, so, so yeah, his song, Dear Walter, is incredible. Um, I, another story about him as well is when I had just begun playing guitar, like really just begun, one, two years in, we went to an open mic. I think it was maybe the first public performance I'd ever done. I dragged my friend, my buddy Seth, to, up on the stage, and we played, I think we played a Ben Harper song. I can't remember if we played more, but I remember doing that one and uh, we had just been playing guitar for a, you know <clears throat> a year or two years or something like that but I distinctly remember uh, sitting in the audience and the other players that were there uh, getting up one after another and Michael Troy was one of them and he made a deep impression in that moment I, re I remembered his name and then like five years later when I had played or not five years later less than that when I had been playing a little bit more um, he came, it came back around and I had met him again and I met him a few more times. I didn't have a close relationship with him like many of the people around here did, but, uh, I saw him really early on when I could, I knew like a couple of chords and he was doing the thing, you know, that I, that I was interested in doing. And, uh, yeah, then I had him at the open mic and then of course he had albums and, I believe he won, uh, or at least he placed or won some category at the Kerrville Folk Festival in Kerrville, Texas, one of those years, some year, which is powerhouse folk uh, songwriter world. Uh, and deservingly, he deserved it. Deserved it. So, um, so yeah, if you haven't heard of Michael Troy, worth checking him out. Listen a couple times, let it sink in, hear his um, excellent fingerstyle guitar playing and, and flat picking. And, uh, you know, allow those lyrics to, uh, to penetrate because they're really beautiful and profound. Great artist. I have uh, great memories and just wanted to pay homage to uh, him and that song, Dear Walter. Hope you enjoyed hearing about that and that you'll check it out. And um, that's about it for now. Uh, take good care. Stay kind. See you soon.